Welcome back to the Altar Podcast. The ladies have taken over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ryan has been officially kicked out, and I am taking the captain's seat this time. There you go, girl. <laughs> and I'm here with <laughs> Mama Erin Brennan. So excited Aww. to talk to you today. And we're going to be hitting a interesting topic, something very close to my heart, and I know close to yours. Yes. Um, and that is inner healing. And so share a little bit about, you know, your role at Resting Place and how it ties in with that. Okay. With inner healing. Um, first so. of all, I've been so excited to do this <laughs> with you. I immediately just had such a yes in my in my spirit, you know, yeah. just because I know that we've had conversations in the past mm -hmm. and we share, you know, like hearts and minds about what inner healing is. Um, I am the director of care and counsel at Resting Place mm -hmm. and the co-founder um, of Resting Place. It's been amazing, an amazing yeah. journey. Um, we're seeing lives transformed and touched and um, we meet with people, you know, walk them through their journey to inner healing. Yeah. I think what has been missing, well, maybe not so much now, but years ago, um, the, the missing part of inner healing, if you will, in, in the church was that um, you know, they believe once, once you get saved, then the old things have Everything. passed away. Everything's yep. good. It's all, um, new and changed. And yeah. while yes, there's a truth to that reality, there's still some walking out of process. I think that, um, went missing. So, yeah. um, you know, when the scripture says, love the Lord with all of your heart, yeah. and with all of your mind and with all of your soul that that indicates that we have three parts so not everything is a spiritual issue yeah and yeah. I don't know about you but for years I would get prayer um, for a spiritual issue when it really wasn't it was an unchecked emotional yeah uh, thing yeah and yeah I remember talking to the Lord one time and he was like Sarah you're trauma can happen in mind body and emotions mm -hmm. you know and like different traumas like hit different parts of you like yeah. someone who is molested might check out mentally and emotionally mm -hmm. just out of a coping mechanism but their physical body is taking on that trauma right or someone might be you know verbally put down and so that hits your logic and your emotions but your body not so much right and so like yes god cleanses us of our sins mm. but i think a lot of times we don't take into account that trauma doesn't necessarily mean we did anything wrong right you know a lot of times those are things that the enemy has attacked us with and broken us down with that leave wounds mm -hmm. and it's not about changing sometimes it's about changing characteristics right. and right. patterns but like a lot of times it's a wound needs to be healed. And yes, Jesus can absolutely, with the cleansing of his blood, right away, do it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, it's that onion that has layers. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like the more you go through a process of healing, the more God also gives you authority in that thing. Yes. Like the amount of work I've had to do to get over depression, I can see it when I talk to other people mm. who are struggling with it, that like... I've gained ground. Like you look at those kings in medieval times and they weren't just fighting against other kings for their own glory, but they were right. like fighting to gain authority for a whole people group. And yeah, I feel like so good. God uses that with our trauma. It's like when we are willing to say yes and go through a process and really work through stuff and fight for the victory, you're also fighting for the authority and yeah. it can affect so many other people's lives. That's so good. Um, but yeah, that is so good. <laughs> Here, you just talk. I'm just <laughs> um, But yeah, I, I have heard, <laughs> I've heard people, you know, when they talk about inner healing, it's like, is it counseling? Is it therapy? I've heard some people say it's witchcraft. Like mm, I, yeah. can we just give a, you know, Webster's dictionary version of what you've seen inner healing to be. Like, what is, what does it mean? What's the process that you've walked through and walked other people through? Like, yeah. simple layman's terms. 
simple layman's terms. Um, we always check in, you know, is there any unforgiveness, you know, mm-hmm. that you have in your heart? Um, we ask them, you know, what their childhood was like, you know, what, yeah. you know, what, tell us your story. Yeah. And the ultimate goal is to connect them to Jesus, yeah. you know, and um, if it's, if it's somebody that's unsaved, cause we have had a few that have come in that aren't saved. Yeah. Um, then we, instead of saying um, Jesus, we say unconditional love. Oh, I love so, that. <laughs> yeah. Because it, 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 he is unconditional yeah. love, you know, yeah. and, and so they can connect to that because sometimes, you know, sometimes if you're ministering to somebody that's not saved, yeah. um, using, you know, God's name, even though, you know, it right. might shut them down a little bit right. or they might have some past wounds that, that way. Um, so, I mean, inner healing is really healing of the heart, healing of, yeah. of your false beliefs and mindsets. You know, mm-hmm. we we create most of our belief system um when we're children it's kind of an unconscious thing children don't have the ability to logic and so uh, for instance i have a different father than the rest of my siblings my dad married my mom with four kids so somewhere along the line nobody ever told me this but somewhere along the line i believed you know that i didn't belong Mm. you know, that I wasn't part of them, you know, no one ever told me that, you know, they loved me, all of that. And, and it kind of rolled into my behavior throughout my life. And so getting to that, um, to that subconscious belief and that, that lie, you know, is in essence is what it is. Um, God brings his healing and his truth to that space. And so that's really what inner healing is. You know, we talk about inner healing and deliverance. They can go hand in hand. They, um, if somebody is, is being delivered from, you know, a wrong spirit or something like that, we need to follow up with, with inner healing because somewhere along the line, they opened a door to that. Things got damaged. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Somewhere along the line, something happened. And so... So we try to just bring love and compassion into that space. Um, And you can see it on someone, you know, you can, you can see when, when they have that aha moment, when truth hits that place in their heart, you just, I mean, there's, there's nothing like it. You know, you just see a life begin to be transformed and you watch God love them in that space because yeah. you know so often I think when we when we have uh, wrong mindsets and false beliefs about even who God is you know I, I, I think that we interpret that as oh he's mad at me or I'm mm-hmm. not good enough or I how can I go to him with this you know yep. and um, and when you watch him love them in that space because of course he's not afraid of any of it yeah and so when you see his heart you know, his heart touched their heart. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So I don't know if that's really the, the, the Webster's no, version of that it. that was but great. No, it's like, it's like counseling and surgery led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Much. Absolutely. You said, um, you know, the lies and then finding the truth. I remember when the Holy Spirit gave me this analogy of the fish hooks mm. and how, the enemy will just hook us yeah. and he'll be able to bury these things and like, he'll be able to let the line out and we'll be able to feel like we're all free. But whenever it's good for him and convenient, he just tugs on that line totally, and can like, and I feel like that is like in the church. So many Christians are being affected by that. These hooks that they didn't even know got planted yep. or maybe they do, but they're too afraid to deal with them and the enemy is just like going along tugging on the line I don't want you to go this direction that God's telling you so I'm just gonna like tug you a little bit so you redirect this way yeah and I was like asking Laura okay so what are these hooks and what he spoke to me was they're the lies that you accept as your truth yeah because the enemy is constantly lying to us he is constantly trying to tell us the opposite of who God says we are, the opposite of who he's called us to be and what he's called us to do. Yeah. 
um, just like you, you believed you didn't belong. Yeah. It was this lie. And as soon as you accept it as your truth, it's like this hook. Right. Gets in and he can just tug on it. You know, maybe 10 years go by. Oh, yeah. And he tugs on it. And so I know for me, like many times that I've gone through inner healing, it's been the recognition of what those hooks are. Yeah. Like, I believe I'm always going to be a failure. Okay. So back when I was 13 and my teacher says, oh, I can't stand students with ADHD. They're always so difficult. They're always like failing or whatever, you know. The enemy uses that person to lie to you and then you accept it as your truth. Right, right. And then when I'm in my 20s or whatever, I can never get anything right. Or somebody says, why can't you just choose to do better? Don't yeah. use ADHD as an excuse, blah, blah, blah. And it's like the enemy is just able to like yank yeah. on that fishing yeah. line. Yeah. And so recognizing those lies and renouncing them and cutting them off and just being like, Lord, what is the truth? That's the yeah. aha moment. Yeah. Oh yeah. God, this is what you've been saying about me all along. Right. This is what you're saying that even though I may have this thing that man has titled ADHD, it also plays a vital role in my creativity. Absolutely. Which is a gift 100%. from God. Yes. And like, you know, this is what you say yes. about it. And so like seeing those truths and the healing that comes from like, getting that hook out and letting the Lord put the salve on mm -hmm, <laughs> that spot mm -hmm. and just heal it. Yeah. We, um, we call that, you know, the subconscious beliefs that, yeah. that drive you because oftentimes those, those things that you didn't even know, like I did not subconsciously, I mean, I did not consciously believe that I didn't belong in my family. Right. I, it wasn't something that anyone said to me, yeah. you know, I mean, they would say, little things like your dad, you know, if they were upset with him, your dad did this and you're, you know, so then it, it made me feel separate, but that's not, that was not their intention. You but know, it was so a subconscious. Tug. It was that. And yeah. so any, t any time in my life that something presented itself, that's where the, the enemy would come and, and hook, yeah. you know, and a lot of times too, I think that, um, as believers, you know, we can tend to, um, I, I want to watch how I say this, so that nobody misunderstands me, we can yeah. tend to spiritualize everything. And what mm. I mean by that is, so I would feel rejected and I would go up for prayer because I have a spirit of rejection on me. You know what mm. I mean? Like a spirit of, and of course that can happen too, but yep. I have a spirit of rejection that's attacking me. Yeah. I would go for prayer and those, I'd get prayer and I would feel better. And then the next day or two days later, I would f get rejected again or feel like I got rejected again. And right. so then what happens is I'm saying, God, I've been asking you to take this spirit of rejection away from me. And how come, why aren't you helping me? And so now the enemy has more play. Yes. Saying, <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Now she's building a case against God. Yeah. And now, you know, and that's exactly where I want them. I want them Absolutely. to begin. But in, in reality, instead of by me saying a spirit of rejection is attacking me. Right. And just, just here, you know, here I'm going with yeah, this. Yeah. Instead of that, I can, I can now say, okay, why do I feel, I can investigate, why do I feel rejected? Mm -hmm. This isn't necessarily an attack. It's an emotional, it's, it's, it's a part of my soul. This is an emotion. Yes, the enemy is, you know, attacking it because now I've built a case against God, but right. it's not a spiritual issue per se. Right. Does that make sense? Like the demons shouldn't get credit for this. Correct. It's literally something I just need to go back in my past and deal and with. And allow the <laughs> Lord to, yeah. to give me his truth. And yes. then, you know, but then there is a level then, especially if you do go to build a case against the Lord, you do need yeah. to repent for that, you know, yeah. and I, and, but it's not like he's holding it over us, you know, right. oh, you, you know, right. you bad girl, you are building a case against me it's not like right. that but it's just like lord i i repent for yeah. coming into alignment with the lies of the enemy i you know repenting and renouncing and so um we really do talk to people to see where where possibly they have allowed the lie to come in and self-awareness yeah. and connecting to your story is as painful as it can be mm -hmm. you really need to you really need Absolutely. to connect to to your past so that 
you can catapult, whoops, sorry, you can catapult, you know, to where God wants you in your future, Yeah, you know, absolutely. and to bring that healing. That breaks, it breaks my heart when I've watched people come up for the same altar call over and over and over again. Yeah. And it's, you hit it on the head. Yeah. It's like, I'm coming to pray for, de- and I was there. Right. I was too. <laughs> like, this was me. Like, I will go to all the altar calls right. to get rid of my depression, God, because I want this to be the McDonald's drive through My order is freedom from depression. Ring right. me up, you know? Yep. Yep. And, but there were steps and I knew it too. Mm. Deep in your spirit, the Holy, the Holy Spirit is always merciful enough. Yep. To tell you where you need to go, but just like you said, going back in the past and reliving some of that stuff and forgiving the people that hurt you and renouncing the vows that you spoke of yourself. Like it can be so painful. Yeah. It can be so painful. And so it takes a lot of strength and courage to make the decision that I know that I'm living at 60% freedom and it's not enough. Right. You know, because we can, I feel like I myself and I've come, you know, across many where 60% was enough for a long time. Right. I knew exactly that I wasn't running on 100% freedom. Exactly. You know, I had 40% of turmoil and just struggle constantly at me, but I could deal with 60%. Yeah. It was good enough. But you have to get to this point where 60% is not enough. And it's like, okay, God, I am willing to go through the fire for the other 40 percent because yeah. i know there's more yeah and so i love it that you are a part of like this ministry that is helping people walk through it yeah it's you know we we started um well i'll, I'll tell you one thing i took this course a few years ago um called living fully alive and mm-hmm. with justin and abby stonevall which their material is great that's (laughs) online right it's online it's an online course um they also have some things like the compassion project different things Mm -hmm. that you can buy and they have a podcast as well called the connected life and um anyway i took the course and it revolutionized some of the way that i thought Mm -hmm. especially about pain um because they they teach us something like what what you just said you were at 40 you know, 60% free and 40%, you know, not, you weren't that hundred percent and we'll do anything to avoid pain. Right. But the pain that, you know, that you're in, say you're on a constant level of, you know, say a level seven pain, that's manageable. Right. I'm used to it. Nothing, you know, as long as I don't, you know, spike, I'm okay. You know, so I'm just used to sailing along with this amount of pain rather than dealing with the pain and keeping it down to a level, you know, having a level two be my norm. Sometimes you might spike up to a 10, but then you drop back down to your level two and people are afraid to do that. Yeah. If that makes sense, you know, uh, kind of what you, what you explained probably in a better way than I just did. But it just, as I was, as I was learning that process, that pain is really, um, not your enemy you know if if you were to hurt something you know break your foot or sprain your ankle or something the pain is telling you something's wrong yeah there so we need to fix it you're not going to just ignore that you know you're going to go and and get help for that and bring healing to it um it's it's like that with emotions but we're just afraid we're afraid of that unknown pain, like what's going to happen to me if I face this, but it's, it's so necessary. Yeah. And I'm still on the, I mean, I'm on the journey. Nobody wants to go I would to a say painful every place. day you live is another day you can heal from. It <laughs> is. It is. It's so, it's, it's just how right. it is. <laughs> and we, I think because we, we live in, like you said, that, that drive by, I want to place my order and, and get mm-hmm. this over with, you know, it's, we, live in that fast let's let's get her done yeah you know time yeah. and it takes time yeah it, it takes time to walk it out and and you know god has such compassion and grace mm-hmm. and mercy on us we also need to have that same compassion grace and mercy on ourselves and yes. and so we often you know climb on the judgment seat of our own heart and say mm-hmm. why 
you know, you should be over this by now. You're, you're older. You, you know, you should, you should be over with all of this stuff when, but if you haven't dealt with it, the pain is still like you're 10 or younger, you know, so. For sure. For sure. Just because I just, I just posted a reel on my Instagram and the woman was saying time doesn't heal wounds. Mm. Choice does. Wow. And she was saying like, you need to choose to heal and forgive and release the bitterness because just letting time go by is not going to make it any less. Right. You may be able to mask. Right. And like disassociate better. Yeah. But it's still there and it's still going to affect your life just as much. Um, The one thing that you said, I want to backtrack to God and Mm. getting like a case against God started is one thing I see all the time. And I warn people that, you know, the enemy is a sore loser Mm. and I'll see people have encounters with the Lord or go through part of the process. Right. And they'll get this breath of release. Yes. And like, yes, healing. And they'll just go on this high of like, yes, I know. It's but, over. <laughs> right. But the enemy is a sore loser. Mm. He is going to try and come back seven times harder, yep. gain more ground, get you to accept that nothing was ever healed, right. nothing was ever conquered. And so, like, I always try to tell people, you know, be on guard. That's yes. the thing. The best way to defeat your enemy is know what they're planning. Yes. That's so good. You know, you hear it in history. Like they had spies trying to figure out what is our enemy going to do? How are they going to attack? What weapons do they have? When you go through this process of healing, you are also learning the weapons that Satan has fashioned for you. Right. And as you're healing from these things, because I... I have watched time and time again, the wounds that people have are specifically correlated with the calling that God has on their yeah, life, that's like so good. without a doubt. Mm. And so if you are going through this process of healing, you're also going to learn like the weapons and the attacks that he has planned for you so that when you get that freedom, when you get that victory and he comes back at you and says, go look at that porn, right? go sleep with that guy, because I mean, you're just trash anyways, blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever the lie is, um, you'll recognize it. Yes. Love, I know, I know this war path. I know this weapon. Yeah. And I'm not going to let it have any ground again. That's so good. And so, um, yeah. When I, I feel like the minute that you come into an agreement with a lie now, whether you're, it's the enemy whispering something, you're so, you're so stupid. You know, you look they're going out to whatever they're going out to lunch and you didn't get invited see you right. know like that kind of you know and the minute you're like yeah mm-hmm. I am and you the minute you come into agreement like you said that hook it's like yep. there it is again you can take that fish yep. hook out but it can just come right, it back, can go again. right back in and and so really getting like you said getting truth mm-hmm. in that space finding out what the lie is and then even just going in his word and finding all those scriptures because you can find you know anything the scriptures that tell the truth about who you are yep. the minute a lie comes in you can you can just start speaking God's truth yeah over that space absolutely the bible is full of declarations yes of truth for yep. you <laughs> right right I am um, my delivery from depression is recent like mm. it happened you know um about a year and a half ago. Wow. <laughs> and the year and a half since has been filled with the enemy trying to rehook me. Right. Like it is, I am shouting from the rooftops what God's done, how he's encountered me, the process he took me through. But he has, the enemy has constantly been trying to use the same yeah. tools. The same. Like I start to feel sad and instantly he's like, oh, it's this. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's this. And I've literally had to watch my mental space and like redesign how I, you know, combat him yeah. because the same thing of, I, I used to try the, Oh no, it's not. Oh no, I'm fine. Right. But I'm literally like, I know now I know what you're doing. I know how you're attacking me. So no, I'm going to take this scripture. I'm going to take this truth that God revealed to me. I'm going to, speak this truth that I might not even feel yes. at the moment out loud to combat right. yeah. out loud out loud to, to combat so good what you're saying to me yeah let's take a moment let's take a moment 
out loud declarations. Yes, yes. <laughs> Get outside your internal mental space right. and make out loud declarations. You literally solidify thoughts twice as much yep. by declaring them because your brain is processing it twice. Yeah. Your brain is thinking about the declaration first. It comes out of your mouth, your ears hear it, and your brain processes it a second time. Right. Make out loud declarations. <laughs> totally. A hundred percent. And and also um, they are proven that your your brain actually believes your voice more than anyone else's. So I know. So when you so when you declare truth with yeah. your own mouth, your your brain is going to believe it the yeah. most. And so Likewise even when you don't yes. feel it, you will convince yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You will believe yourself best. So even if you don't feel like I've been hearing lately from people, I'm damaged goods. I don't mm. know what that theme yes. is this year, but I yeah. keep hearing people say like, I'm damaged goods. If that is a lie that the enemy is saying to you, mm. you start speaking of yourself. I am a treasure. Yeah. I am priceless. Yeah. I am, you know, rebuilt and cleansed by the blood of the lamb. Yes. You know, yeah. start declaring those things, even if you do not feel them, contradict them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It will change. It yeah. will change the way that you think. Um, God's been, ha I've been in Philippians 4, 8 mm. for a while. And, yeah. um, and he, every devotion that I do, there's something about Philippians four in there, you know, it's just yeah, every it's single one back. it is. <laughs> and so whatever things are true, whatever things yeah. are noble, whatever things are of good report, you know, whatever things are praiseworthy, it, it goes on and on. Think on these things, Sam. It's just, right. it's, it, he's telling us, no, if it is, if, if anything praiseworthy of, or of good report, mm -hmm. think on these things and the God of peace He's he's gonna meet us there, you know, it's and like, it's almost as if he just like gave us <laughs> right. the whole. Here's the answer. Here's the answer to your problem, <laughs> right there, right, right. But it so. just is is so difficult sometimes, you know. To that's another place I think the enemy tries to keep us. Well, definitely he gets us in our our minds, you know, first. And so, yeah. if he can keep us from thinking whatever is true, whatever is lovely, you know, whatever is of good report, yeah. then, then it's just, we're caught in that just hamster wheel of your mind going and going and going. So it is, it is absolutely a hundred percent, a thousand percent true what you said yeah. about, about declaring God's truth yeah. in that area. So good. And it's like, you <clears throat> cannot control the thought that comes into your mind when it does. Mm-hmm. But you can control how far it gets. Yeah. In your yeah. thought process. You can either shut it down. Right. Or you can give it the authority to spiral you. Right. Into some place that right. you don't belong. Right. So I want to talk real quick before we wrap this episode up. I want to talk real quick about practical things people can do. Okay. Because I have talked to a lot of people who are like, I don't have a ministry like this near me. I don't have the money to go to a therapist. Good news for you. The Holy Spirit is right there. Right. <laughs> and he doesn't right. charge. <laughs> like, <Right>. So <laughs> He's free. <laughs> right. So when people, let's, let's take an example of um, an addiction. So someone has an addiction that they cannot shake. They keep coming back to it. Moderate. We're not going into drugs and all right. that, but right. just a, a mild right. addiction. And it's affecting their life and they want to shake it. How are some ways they can go with the Holy Spirit and try to find the root of that thing? Yeah, that's that's it right there is the root. People are generally, not generally, I think it's 100% in addictions because of pain. Mm. And because what the addiction is doing is giving that temporary relief. Yeah. You know, and, and it does. It gives yep. a temporary relief, but then you go back into the shame spiral and then you're in pain again. And yep. so then you just keep doing it over and over. So yep. I, you know, we say to people, find find out what happened. You know, think about, okay, say 
whatever the addiction is, a food addiction or, you know, I mean, the hard part about a food addiction is we all have to eat. Right. right? So, right. <laughs> so, so let's use, yeah, let's use one that's affected me during my depression and okay. that's sugar. I would binge sugar when okay. I was at my saddest. Right. So sugar. Like, okay. You just. Yeah. So you can, you can say practically, you can say, okay, what just happened? okay, I was, I was fine. And now all of a sudden, you mm-hmm. know, like what, what thought came into my mind? Right. Um, did something externally happen that kind of, you know, triggered mm-hmm. that little space? Am I stressed? Yeah. Um, it can look be anything. Yeah. Look for That's a thought a pattern and just say what, what just transpired and then ask, ask the Lord, you know, God, if you can't think of anything, ask the Holy Spirit to help you Mm-hmm. discover it and he he will you know yeah. he's good and then just you know do that investigation don't be afraid to investigate we have right. to because sometimes we don't know you know what might have triggered us you know yeah. it could be in a situation at work or at home or anything yeah. um and then find that place of pain and then allow him to you know to minister to that spot you know that's a if you're at home, you know, by yourself or driving in your car, that's a, that's an easy, you know, place. And then, and then allow, um, the Lord to bring compassion to that, to that painful place that's in your heart. And, um, you know, then the other thing would be, you know, call, call somebody that's trusted, Yeah, you know, I mean, we need one another, right? It's, we're not on a friend you can process with. Yeah. Yeah. And just process, process it out with somebody that you can trust. That's, you know, that's in your inner circle, I would say, you know, you don't have to tell your business to everybody, but, but, um, what we also, I mean, at resting place, we, we do minister and counsel with people. Um, if they can't get over it, if you really, if there's something that you really, can't get past on your own you need you definitely need help yeah but the lord is the one who who ultimately um it's it's so it's so cool because we just we just get to be the the navigators a little bit but it's really Mm -hmm. them telling us what the lord is saying to them and showing to them he's doing all the work with them and i would say in those moments where you are asking the lord show me the root of this don't bypass anything that comes to mind. Yes. Like it can seem completely unrelated to what you're trying to work through. Like I had a needle phobia for years. It Mm. had nothing to do with needles. (laughs) And in the end I was like, that's what that (laughs) was. That's usually what it is. Like, so it could be complete. It can seem completely unrelated, but if God is highlighting someone for you to forgive, Yes. If God is highlighting something that was said to you over and over and over again that you need to just break that off, like don't disregard it because it doesn't have to do directly with what you see is the problem. Right. Right. Um, Because it could be something much more. Totally. Most of the time it's really not about that. Right that thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's so true. It's amazing how that works. It's so true. It really is. But so just, I want to wrap up by saying okay. one more thing, uh, because I feel like it's not said in the church enough. Mm-hmm. And that is, um, if you need to go see a doctor, mm-hmm. there's no shame in that. Absolutely. If you need to take medication because your body chemistry is literally out of whack. If you need to go on a diet where you cut out like basically everything except lettuce because you're trying to balance your hormones, there's no shame a thousand percent in that because, you know, so many times I've heard people say you got to bucket up buttercup and get through it with Jesus. Yeah, you can with the help of doctors also. Right. And so um, I know for me after I had my son, like postpartum depression was legit. Yeah. Yeah. And so some of those things are not about trauma. They're about chemistry. And so I just wanted to put that out there. I think that's so (laughs) good that you did because I, I was raised in the church to, you know, believe those. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. You don't need that. You know, you don't need that. Just pray more. That's right. the big thing. You just need to pray more. You just need yep. to get in the word. Yep. You know, you just need. Okay. Yeah, you do. But then you also need to 
see a doctor and maybe get some on, right. on some medication. And there's right. no shame in that yeah, at all. There is no shame in getting, if you are doing your due diligence with the Lord, mm-hmm. there is no shame in getting some blood work done. Right. And talking to someone with a PhD. Right. There's not. So I just wanted to put that out there. That's so good. Um, for someone who may have been, if someone's listening who has been feeling from the Holy Spirit to go see someone, but you're like, no, I'm ashamed. Yeah. He could be leading you to do that too. So, so good. I'm so glad that you said that because we, we definitely um, don't talk enough about that. I'd yeah, say. For yeah. Sure. For yeah. Sure. That's so good. Well, thank you so much. Oh my much. gosh. This, this is so great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. So this is Erin Brennan. Again, she is one of our leaders and mamas at Resting Place House of Prayer in Woodland Park, New Jersey. And it was an honor. Thanks, Sarah. It was so such a blessing to be here. Love you. Love you, too. Okay.